Okay, in this video, I'm going to be talking about a new model from a new company, which is a foundation model, which looks very interesting. And they've also just released today a chat version of the model, which I'll have a little play with as well. This organization is 01.ai, and their model is Yi, which means, I'm pretty sure it means one in Chinese. They've basically released two versions of this model. They've released a 34 billion, and both of these are base versions. So they've released the 34 billion model. This is trained on 3 trillion tokens, and they have both a sort of normal version and a version that can go up to 200k context window for this. And they've released the Yi 6B model. So again, this is trained on 3 trillion tokens. It can go up to 200k for the context windows. So I'm not so interested in the long context window here. I'm not going to really be testing that out. I think it's quite consistent now that most of the models with these long context windows, including GPT-4 Turbo, etc., kind of proving that the long context window perhaps doesn't work as well as people had hoped or anticipated for this kind of thing. So these models are available for you to do research. And they do have the ability for you to get a commercial license for free. You will need to apply for that license. They've got some info here where you can apply. If you come onto their Hugging Face page, you can actually have a look at these models and get the details of actually applying for the license in here. I'm pretty sure they've got the links to be able to fill it out, etc. in here. So currently up on Hugging Face, they've uploaded a number of different models. They've got the one that we're going to look at is the Yi 34 billion chat model. Interestingly, they've made their own 8 bits and 4 bits uh, versions of this. I'm not sure you know, what their intention is there. And it's also that the Hugging Face user, the bloke, has already also made 4 bit and 8 bit versions in a variety of different formats for if you wanted to run this model in Olama or something like that. So this Yi 34-bit chat is the model that I'm going to be running. I'm going to run it in 4 bits so that it's easy enough for you to be able to load it up and have a play with it, etc. They've got some nice documentation in here about the things that they've released, about the 200k versions in here. And we can also see like the base model performance. So it's interesting that they're showing benchmarks for the base models. And only just today, it seems that they've actually released a supervised fine tuning or a chat model for this so this is kind of interesting to look at in here so you can see that they definitely the stats that they're getting are very good for things like mmlu for the math and code and stuff like that so this model can do quite a lot of things already that's the base version so we're going to be looking at the fine tune version of this so this is the chat model performance in here and one of the things that's really nice in here is that they actually give the stats, not only for the different size models, although so far I haven't seen the 6 billion chat uploaded. I think that could be a very interesting model to play with when it finally does get uploaded. But also they've given the stats for the 8-bit versions and the 4-bit versions of these models. So you can check those out and see, okay, how much do you actually lose going to 4-bit? Contrary to a lot of opinion on Facebook, you do actually lose something when you go to 8-bit or to 4-bit. Often that is not easily noticeable. So it's kind of nice that they've benchmarked this out so we can actually see how it is when you're actually going through this. So we can see the chat model 34B is getting better scores for things like MMLU than the 70 billion Llama 2 chat model. So again, this is a very interesting kind of stats in here. And as far as I know, they're one of the first ones to actually go and provide the different 4-bit and 8-bit formats directly rather than just having someone else do the conversions for this themselves. So they've also got some nice info in here about their actual prompt. So we can see that they're using the ML chat style of prompt. So we can see that you would actually construct a list of messages with each one being a dictionary of role and content in there so we'll have a look at that when we have a look at code and they've got some stuff here about how to load it up etc so i've already put together a collab and how to play with this so we can have a look at this before we do that though i want to talk about a little bit about the company o1 ai this appears to be the new startup 
from Kaifu Li or Li Kaifu. If you don't know who Kaifu Li is, he was originally one of the first CEOs of Google in China before Google scaled back their search engine business and other things in China. He's also been heavily involved in Microsoft Research Asia in China. And I think up until recently, he was mostly a venture capitalist. But he's got a very strong pedigree in AI. I think his PhD was certainly in things related to machine learning, etc. So it is kind of interesting that his startup has gone out and made these models. Now, these are bilingual models that can do both English and Chinese, I'm pretty sure, in here. But we can see that, you know, they've, they've got a bunch of things in here of the goals that they've sort of aimed for this and some of the stats that we've already looked at going through here. So I do think this is an interesting company. In some ways, perhaps you could think of this as being like a Chinese version of Mistral or a Chinese version of Inflection. The team behind it clearly know what they're doing. It's in my hand. They clearly know what they're doing. They've got good backing. Seems they've also got good leadership. If you are interested in Kaifu Li, I would definitely recommend that you check out some of his books. So a few years back, he wrote a very good book called AI Superpowers which compared China to Silicon Valley and around the whole AI space, which was a very interesting book to read. And more recently, he wrote a book called AI 2041, which is a very interesting book in that he teamed up with a fiction writer and they did 10 chapters of different sort of short stories of fiction that are revolve around AI. And then Kaifu Li wrote a sort of sub-chapter for each of them explaining what the actual technology was and how he expects to see it progress over the next 10, 20 years or so. This is certainly an interesting idea for how he does the book. Both his books are very interesting reads, and I would definitely recommend if you are into AI, check out these. It's very interesting to see that he's gotten back into the startup game personally and that they're going clearly after sort of foundation model level for a large language model in here. So let's jump into the code and have a look at how the model actually performs. Okay, so I've set this up so that you can either load the model in 4-bit or in 8-bit in here. Of course, if you've got a big enough GPU, you'll be able to load the whole thing in 16-bit. In 4-bit though, it seems to be taking up, for me, around 22 gig of VRAM on an A100 in here. So unfortunately, it's too big to load into a free T4, but it's certainly something that you can check out if you've got access to an A100 or multiple GPUs in here. So like I mentioned before, they're using the ML chat format for doing messaging, etc. So in here, I've just put in the example of a system and example of a user message in here. You would then basically apply that with the tokenization we then run it through model generate, we decode the response. And you'll see that the responses that you get out are actually very good in this, which is not a huge surprise. I'm not sure exactly in their version whether they're using system prompts or not. I think so. But what I've done is I've actually done two versions of this, one without system prompts and one with system prompts for going through this. So just setting this up, I've created the, the generate function to be able to handle this ML chat, et cetera, and to be able to use just our standard generate function that we can pass in. So let's have a look at some of the examples in here. So first off, you'll notice that it seems to generate things in Markdown, which is kind of nice. And you'll notice that it has a definitely a different feel to a model like Mistral or some of the other ones. As we go through and look at this, its answers can be quite verbose in its responses like it doesn't mind taking its time to actually tell you different things in here i guess this kind of fits with me writing that okay write a detailed analogy it really does seem to go into sort of details much more than some of the mistral fine tunes or even the llama 2 fine tunes in here you also find that it tends to do things like in bullet points like this like in these kind of chunks here so when we ask it the, the standard question about uh, compare a llama to a vicuna to alpaca we get this back where it's basically giving us sort of a list of stats and bullet points that you could go through and do this and you can see that okay while we get those sort of little facts about each one we also then get a summary at the end 
uh, of combining these together for this. One of the standard questions I ask, of course, is the email to Sam Altman, which is kind of ironic given all the news that's going on with Sam Altman over this past week. I'm going to try and stay out of that a little bit. But anyway, we can see that, you know, going through this, we're getting, you know, pretty good results for this. Now, these are the ones where we're not using the system prompt. I do like, you know, that it, the creative story writing on this is actually very good for this. But what I wanted to do was also look at using the system prompt version. So here I've basically gone through and now added in the system prompt. The system prompt I'm using is URE, a large language model trained by 01.ai. Write out your reasoning step by step. So very similar to what we've used for Zephyr and for some of the other things. And you can see that it does pick up on this. So I found it was quite funny looking at the spec to the Sam Altman one that where I tell it who it is in the system prompt or, you know, tell it that it's a large language model, it actually writes the email from the large language model. I am writing to you as ye, a large language model trained by 01.ai to discuss potential benefits of open sourcing GPT-4. Again, it's nice how we've got the bolding in Markdown here. So we're not actually seeing that in here, but you could imagine that if we're rendering that out, you've got nice bolded points for doing this kind of thing. And it signs off with its name, everything. So when we change that system prompt to you're Freddie, a five-year-old, we definitely get a hugely different email. So this is one of the key things that I like to see. Okay, how well does this do? And remember that when we compare to the Zephyr, versions with their supervised fine tuning, they didn't have system prompts. So it really didn't respond in the same way like this. It needed to have the DPO where they actually inserted the system prompt in there to get the results back like this. Again, letter to Sam Altman, this time from the vice president. We get a very good point by point sort of discussion of this. We even get some nice touches of things like PS at the end, basically talking about this thing, being a bit more geared to trying to engage Sam Altman, probably a lot more than some of the other emails that we've looked at in here. A very nice answer for the Jeffrey Hinton part that no. So it tends to give the answer up front and then explain you know, in here, which is interesting. Again, another very good creative storytelling here. Just the idea of the in the heart of the Australian outback where eucalyptus trees sway and the sunsets are vivid as the stories told around the campfire. Very nice prose in here going through this. It's also interesting here that it doesn't just go into a conversation of Alice, Bob, Alice, Bob. When it's told continue as Bob, it just sticks to that one role. It gives a nice long answer, but it's not going back to just generating the conversation as we go through. And then the code gen in here. So I'll let you have a play with that. I'm just going to skip straight through to the GSM 8K. So remember the grade school math 8K, we're looking at this to sort of test its reasoning abilities and see how well it does. It does very well on the first one. It understands that the nine apples. Recently, a number of them are doing well on this. So it does make me wonder whether people are doing direct fine tuning on this example in here. It gets this one pretty much right. This should be $10 for 15 minutes. And it's basically got here 9.9996 and $9.99 here. Unfortunately, it doesn't do a good job of the deep sea monster one. So remember the trick here is that we want it to calculate how many people died in the first year, and then it doubles for the second year and then doubles again for the third year. So really, we would have 4x plus 2x plus 1x for this. So it doesn't do a good job at working out like that. If I do phrase it though as x plus 2x plus 4x, so this is year one, year two, year three, and then that equals 847. Now it actually does go and calculate that out quite nicely in here. So have a play with this model. I do think this model could be really useful in a sort of Olama situation. Unfortunately, the 6 billion one is not up. But my guess is that you can certainly try that if you see that up here. Just swap out the 34 billion for the 6 billion in here. So again, another very interesting foundation model. Been in chat, fine-tuned, definitely worth checking this, this out. 
It could be a very useful model to run as a private model in something like Olama or LM Studio, etc. Try it out. They've given a whole bunch of 4-bit versions and 8-bit versions themselves in here. So you can certainly got a lot of options of how you can run this model. Anyway, as always, if you've got any comments, please put them in the comments below. If you found the video useful, please click on subscribe. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.